Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sapphire Foods Quarter 2 and First Half FY24 Consolidated Financial Highlights. Let me jump in straight away. Our Quarter 2 Consolidated Restaurant Sales at 641 crores grew by 14% and our EBITDA at 117 crores grew by 13%. And this is con despite continuing headwinds that we see in the quarter and this quarter has been further exacerbated by an additional month of vegetarian days or adhik mass. Uh, in, from a quarter on quarter perspective, raw material inflation has been stable but on a year on year basis, uh, we have had improvement in raw material prices and therefore gross margins have seen significant improvements year on year. We added 36 restaurants in this quarter to take our total restaurant count up to 814. 23 of them were KFC, 9 Pizza Hut in India and we opened 4 Pizza Hut in Sri Lanka. Our consolidated restaurant EBITDA Margin was 16.1%. It was down 70 basis points versus last year, but it grew in absolute terms by 10%. Our console EBITDA, this is post India, is at 117 crores or 18.2%. This grew year on year by 13% and was down 20 basis points over last year. Consolidated adjusted EBITDA was about 68 crores or 10.6% down 50 basis points versus last year, but 68 crores was 9% up year on year. Consolidated PBT, and this is post India's PBT, was 21 crores or 3.3% and declined year on year by 21% or down 150 basis points. And Consol PAC was 15 crores or 2.4%. Now let me uh, go on to KFC. This quarter KFC, as I said earlier, was impacted by an additional month of Shravan. I'm looking at uh, slide number, um, I'm starting from slide number 19 onwards. But the brand delivered a very strong performance despite the additional month of Shravan. Uh, Vijay, will, Vijay will talk about the numbers, but let me first look at slide number 19. These are our brand priorities. The six brand priorities are a continuing theme that we focus on uh, quarter to quarter, year to year. It is to enhance the fried chicken category relevance through advertising and communication to be known as the taste leader in the QSR category and innovation uh, is drives this uh, perception. Value is an important part. Um, we have launched Snackers at 99 and the initial response has started quite well. Uh, there is lots of potential for growth in this uh, value range. From an innovation perspective, we launched Double Down Burger. It's a, a repeat of a earlier limited time offer that we had we had done. From a frictionless customer experience, we have now digital kiosks implemented in 115 stores. Customer reactions are quite encouraging, leading us to believe that if customer is in charge of their, uh, his or her own journey, it leads into a better um, experience and therefore uh, even higher uh, average ticket value. From an operational excellence, we continue our seven minutes express pickup. Um, uh, this is the nuts and bolts of our business. If we deliver operationally well, if all other will be able to serve our customers good food at good experience and at good value and this is day in day out uh, focus at our stores. And finally from a improving accessibility point of view, uh, 
the slide number 22 talks looks at some of our new stores Vijay if you can just talk us through the financial highlights thank you Sanjay uh, there is slide number 23 Channel wise mix has largely remained stable uh, for KFC with delivery coming at 38% mix and dining at 43% 40, for KFC. Moving on to slide number 24, overall restaurant sales grew by 19% with flat SSSG uh, this despite one additional month of Shravan which we experienced in quarter 2. Gross margin improved by 230 basis point uh, year on year. It was stable quarter over quarter. This along with tighter cost controls meant that KFC delivered a very strong restaurant EBITDA at 19.2%. In fact, if you look at H1, the restaurant EBITDA is at 20%, uh, which is highest ever delivered by KFC Sapphire uh, for first half. Moving to slide number 26, it gives you a, a perspective over four years and five last five quarters trend. Overall, brand continues to be very uh, in a very strong position and we will continue with our phase of expansion on new restaurants. Let me move on to Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut has undoubtedly had a tough quarter. Um, our SSSG has been negative 20% and overall brand despite store expansion has been has declined, overall brand sales has declined 6%. I want to call out three things here for you. One is Macro conditions continue to remain tough uh, for all consumer categories including QSR and you can see that through the results of other brands also. In this QSR category, um, KFC Sapphire itself is flat SSSG and when you uh, look at uh, the results of uh, other QSR companies, it is anywhere between 0 and 5%. In the pizza category over the last 18 months or so, competitive intensity also has been uh, uh, perhaps the highest in the QSR category. And as you can see by the results of the number one player in this uh, market, so they in the number one player always leads the market performance. Um, there also we have, we have seen the impact of competitive intensity. Our SSSG decline of 20% comes over a comp of 23% last year which was perhaps the highest in our history and if I look at a two year SSSG average of between 1.5% and 2% um, that, will, uh, that will compare uh, a little more favorably when you look at other brands also. So, uh, having said that, we are not standing still as I have said, clearly we need to revive the brand and I am looking at slide number 28 in the deck. We are trying to give you a detail of the action plans that we are pursuing under four buckets. The first one is how do we build brand salience? We find that the brand, while overall awareness is as high as the number one uh, player, we lag on awareness and uh, on uh, we lag on top of mind awareness and consideration. And this is not something that is new. This is something that we have known for the last five or six, seven years. I think both product innovation uh, and enhanced marketing spends are the way to improve salience. We've launched the large pizza initially in two states of Gujarat and Kerala. They've, it has started to do well. And we've got a quite exciting innovation pipeline over the next 6 to 12 months time. Uh, further than that, we continue to um, enhance our marketing spends over and above what is mandated with our franchisor. The second leg that we are focusing on is dine-in sales. And dine-in sales has two components. One is from an operations perspective, how do we deliver uh, speedy service and how do we deliver high quality of customer experience. So we have invested in a dragon tail tech solution. This is an intelligent kitchen production planning tool. 
and this enables us to serve hot and fresh pizzas um, as quickly as possible to consumers. This is perhaps we are the only player or among the very few uh, or only player in India to have a such kind of a kitchen planning tool and it has been um, one or two months since we have rolled it out to all Pizza Hut stores and it's a start. Uh, we are quite uh, we are quite confident that this will help us going forward. From a customer perspective, we are doing a lot to reinforce the uh, dine-in experience through both curated deals, through analytics and through CRM programs and we want to build the lunch dine-in experience. The third leg is to strengthen home uh, service and again there are two pillars, two uh, big action points. We've opened late night occasions and today 65% of our stores deliver 2 a.m. and beyond. So that's adding a new occasion leg to our sales. And finally, Dragon Tail is now being integrated with the aggregator platforms so that irrespective of when the rider comes to the store, we are able to uh, calibrate uh, when we load the pizza and therefore in the shortest possible time, uh, the consumer is able to uh, receive the pizza and therefore it's hot and fresh. So this should impact our ratings. As it impacts the ratings, will also help us build sales. And the last part is our real estate strategy. And many of you all on this call would have asked us this question with Pizza Hut, this performance, what do you plan to do on new store expansion? Uh, we are calling out that we will be very cautious on our uh, rate of expansion. There, do, there, it, or, uh, there are opportunities that are still available for us to expand. We will do that judiciously. There will be some level of portfolio corrections, perhaps 3 to 5 percent, uh, uh, where we'll close non-performing assets. We continue to invest behind refurbishments because this enhances customer experience. And finally, uh, there's a continuing project on CapEx optimization through process re-engineering on the uh, back end. I want to reiterate this, and again, you'll have heard me and Vijay say this, that Pizza Hut remains an important pillar of our multi-brand strategy. And despite the short-term dip that we have seen, with the above action plan, we believe the brand will recover in the medium term. Over to Vijay to look at the, to give you the specifics on the financial numbers. Yep. Uh, moving on to slide 33, the channel-wise mix uh, has remained stable even for Pizza Hut largely. Uh, delivery at 49% and dining at 35%. Slide 34, overall Pizza Hut revenue has declined by 6% with double-digit decline on SSSG. Uh, and as Sanjay called out uh, last year quarter 2, we had 23% SSSG, uh, highest ever for us. So that's a partial base effect as well, uh, apart from the tough macro conditions and high competitive intensity. Slide 35, gross margin was up by 140 basis points. However, due to operating deleverage on account of negative SSSG, meant that the restaurant EBITDA was impacted, which came at 7.6% for the quarter. Slide 36 gives you a uh, synopsis of four-year trend and five-quarter trend. Uh, and again, as mentioned by Sanjay, with the action plans uh, which we have laid out, uh, we believe the brand will emerge stronger uh, in the medium term. Let me speak about Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, the country is showing green shoots of macroeconomic recovery. Uh, inflation is down to single digits. There's forex stability. Uh, the tourism business is uh, picking up uh, substantially. There's ease of availability of raw materials. However, there is inflation in other categories. For example, utility costs have gone up, electricity costs have gone up. Um, uh, we launched a, quite an innovative product called Melts. This is an exciting innovation. It's what I call an individual consumption inverted pizza option, and it's doing well. Um, we also opened two stores in Matakulia and Kilinochi. 
and quickly um, uh, can you tell us the, the numbers please vijay slide 41 uh, channel wise mix so sri lanka uh, delivery mix is at 36% and dining is at 30% ssg was 1% so while the overall revenue grew by 8% in lkr terms Uh, because of the forex benefit uh, in indian terms we grew by 29% for the quarter gross margin saw a 680 basis points improvement uh, and the overall restaurant ebitda came at 15.3% this is highest in the last 5 quarters slide 45 shows a four year trend and five quarter trend uh, as can be seen that this is the best quarter probably in the last five and we remain confident of the growth opportunity uh, that present is to us in sri lanka yes finally in conclusion um, and despite consumer demand headwinds i think we have had a good quarter kfc first half delivering the highest ever restaurant ebitda margin shows the power of our operational uh, focus and the excellence that we drive at a uh, uh, operational Uh, level we also grew the brand at 20% so 20% growth and 20% restaurant ebitda is quite powerful we know we have um, headwinds on pizza hut and we have to solve this but we are doing everything in our control to be able to resolve this um uh sri lanka is positive and it will continue to, again if you will remember um are seeing this that we expect sri lanka to start turning around in uh, in calendar year 24 we are already seeing these green shoots today and if you put it together in a multi brand strategy there will be some quarters where all three pillars are firing um in our case uh, over the last say 18 months we have had perhaps two out of the three pillars firing um but uh, we are doing everything that in is in our control to get all three cylinders firing with with uh, uh, kfc doing well sri lanka doing well our overall results are still strong when we look at the rest of the market i'll pause out here i'll stop out here and now we'll open it up for questions thank you very much for listening thank you very much we'll now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assemble. <coughs> the first question is from the line of Jay Kumar Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Hi team. Yes. Yeah. Hi team. Afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks. Can you speak a little bit louder, sir? Sure. Uh, hi team. Good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is: This Bregel Tail Tech was acquired by Yum about a couple of years ago. So, are there any case studies of it helping uh, Pizza Hut in some other markets uh where there is a significant improvement in uh, delivery experience uh, and uh, customer ratings yeah so you have two questions i'll answer this uh, jay so uh, dragon tail is now a company that has been acquired by uh, by uh, it's an asian company that has been acquired by yum they have had two big cases one is actually of helping a uh competitor of ours in a market like australia where they saw a quite strong uh, uh you know improvement in delivery metrics and then before we adopted this we had gone to our singapore and malaysia businesses where we do a lot of the delivery ourselves so in those markets and uh, so what it does in a simple manner is basis rider availability it tells you when to put the pizza into the oven and therefore uh, uh, when the rider arrives uh, he or she gets uh, hot pizza to carry in 
otherwise the typical response is as soon as you end as soon as you get the uh, order you try and make the pizza and load it into the oven and then wait for the rider so this reduces right the uh, the the time that the pizza is there in the store waiting for a rider in our case because aggregators are a large portion of our business it is important to integrate with the aggregator partners uh, this has taken longer because um, we are actually the only uh, brand perhaps to have to or to have a solution like this but again they have been magnificent partners and they've helped us um, this is quite recent i must say jay but uh, uh, even uh, uh, we think that because we are now able to time stamp every part of our production and delivery journey this will result in better customer experience uh, understood uh, i have one more question of pizza hut but uh, uh, let me ask another question that often comes from investors uh, So Sanjay, we want to know your thoughts on uh, you know, would you at any point of time uh, consider biryani as a category of your interest from an M&A perspective? And especially, you know, there is a biryani brand in the group entity. So a lot of times investors, uh, you know, bring up this question whether you know at some point of time would Sapphire acquire that business. Yeah. So just your thoughts about you know merits of that business and how does it sort of how do you think about it? yeah so we have been quite clear about uh, articulating uh, the seven mantras for scale and success for success and scale in this qsr category and uh, um, one the first and foremost is that it has to be center of plate or or habit form or habit you know part of a daily habit it has to uh, be difficult to make at home it has to have production processes that are uh, easily aligned and so on and so forth therefore when you when we uh, when we looked at pizza hut uh, for example 7 years ago we thought it meant most most uh, criteria there were one or two criteria that it didn't meet for example omni channel at that time or value and those were the areas that we tried to fix if i look at biryani it does meet most of these requirements um uh, except that do production processes should not require a chef so uh, uh, there are a couple of things that need to be fixed in this uh, category if those those areas are fixed undoubtedly this category can deliver success with scale so that is point number 1 when we look at internationally also the big uh, food cuisine categories in any of the big markets you will find a local option to have um, uh, a strong uh, play in a particular market so that is number 1 number 2 is while we get asked this question we have built this company on a strong governance platform so anything that we do um anything that we do will be uh, uh so anything that we'll do will be done in a as transparent manner as possible and uh, uh, uh you know will be done in as transparent as manner as possible the third point for me to say is that there are no plans at this particular point in time i hope that's very nice purposely to give you a little more detail answer jay forgive me if it was too detailed no 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 this is this is this is uh, very helpful thank you so much i just have one last question uh, i'm sorry uh, for the third one but uh, look uh, in the second half of fy23 your performance seems to stay growth was broadly comparable to market leader i mean you know and in line with category uh, headwinds or category trends in the last Six months in two quarters. What has changed for such divergence in uh, you know such 20 percent uh, unprecedented decline? Uh, whereas you know for market leaders there is a mar- marginal deterioration. So yeah. where do you think Pizza Hut has lost out in the last six months? 
so uh, last year these six months also we were outliers in the category from a um, SSSG perspective both when we compared to uh, ourselves to the number one player and when we compare ourselves to the other franchisee we were outliers so we performed our SSSG was significantly higher than both brands now on a two year basis if you do the same analysis there you see that actually it is comparable so uh, uh, is that what we want no i thought we were flying and we had most of the elements of our strategy in place but um, as this downturn has hit us and as consumer headwinds have uh, demand headwinds have been there perhaps it's impacted us a little uh, more um, I think we just have to uh, work to strengthen the brand and continue to uh, uh, work on our operational efficiencies. I see crisis always as an opportunity. These are the times to learn and these are the times to really uh, up the game. And this will play itself out over a period of time. Even the competitive intensity part, we know how people have uh, expanded. Um, and when you expand through a, a sub franchisee model uh, in a downturn it is hurting everyone and when it hurts a single store franchisee then we know what can happen to overall quality uh, of product and customer experience so i think in the short term we have just got to bite our lip and take the punishment uh or bite our tongue and take the punishment but this will play out over a, a period of time we are here for the long term and uh, we are quite confident that we can recover uh, our position on this brand thank you and wish you the best for uh, upcoming festivities thank you uh, jay thank you The next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just a follow-up on uh, Jay's uh, question. Uh, so, what is the kind of investment uh, that has gone into uh, Dragon Tail solution? And uh, what are the kind of uh, time savings uh, uh, that we are initially saying uh, uh, from making of the pizza to delivering of the pizza uh, to the consumers? So the, uh, there is no capex investment, uh, Devanshu. It is a per transaction investment. I can't share with you uh, a per transaction cost. And also, uh, you know, what is the uh, internal metrics that uh, we monitor? I think over a period of time, this will, this should show up in the kind of aggregator ratings that we have got or the rating the brand has got on the aggregator uh, platforms and therefore should translate into sales. Got it. And I agree, sir, uh, we are obviously in a challenging environment, uh, but there are also some uh, positive tailwinds in the form of uh, World Cup festive season. Uh, plus, there has been a dip mass in the previous quarter as well. Uh, so, wanted to check uh, what should be reasonable expectation on uh, sequential pickup in both KFC Pizza Hut uh, uh, based on your historical experiences uh, 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 for Q3, Q4. So, typically Q3 is higher than uh, Q2, especially for uh, KFC. Pizza Hut is roughly similar right across the quarters. Um, this year we have had a World Cup, but last year also we had the T20 World Cup and the Football World Cup. So, uh, if you ask me, Devanshu, uh, all um, all of this is plus minus. I mean, in general, uh, the last 20 days of uh, uh, or the last two weeks of uh, December is what contributes to quarter three being higher than quarter one or quarter two. And any uh, deviation or pickup from historical trend that we should expect uh, uh, in Q3 or it should be more uh, normalized what we have seen uh, uh, in the historical quarters between Q2 and Q3? The only difference in this time in Q3 is that in October month we had a, a impact, lag effect, impact of Shah and then we had Navratra. So that's the only change because of the Adhikmas coming in quarter two, 
uh, october will be softer uh, but again when we look at the entire quarter we don't see it going to be materially different than the pre- previous seasonal or historical trends got it mr and uh, sir uh, globally yum has been sort of also adopting a loyalty rewards program uh, so wanted to check your thoughts uh, on this trend and are we sort of um, uh, planning to implement uh, 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 in india as well yeah so there's a part of the we don't have a loyalty program right now uh, but it's part of the agenda uh, going forward uh, having said that there are enough and more analytics which we do with the consumer data uh, base so for all our channels dining takeaway and delivery including the aggregator delivery uh, we do get the consumer data uh, on which the various analytic program beat in terms of repeat customers lapses offers getting customized to the customer requirements the, all those programs is, are in play the only part which is probably missing is the loyalty program uh thanks sir uh, thanks for taking my questions and all the best for the upcoming festive season thank you thank you devanshu thank you the next question is from the line of jignes kamani from gmo please go ahead yeah hi jignes just want to know if you will move the adhik mass for the uh, balance to month have is the uh, apple to apple ssg for us in the third quarter or oh, the stuff to really try and to predict the ssg for third quarter is that or quarter 2 yeah. yeah yes so again we always typically avoid giving quarter one quarter guidance to be fair uh, all i can tell you is that from a trend point of view the kfc has remained flat in h1 uh, from a consumer demand point of view we are not seeing anything different uh, materially different for it to be uh, uh, moving either downward or upwards that's one thing same thing on pizza hut i think uh, what we have seen in h1 there's a lot of work in terms of action plan required to change the trajectory so that's all i will say that we are not seeing any materially different in terms of trajectory of for both the brands why is it because on second quarter or uh, first quarter also your ssg was almost flat on kfc yes and despite a dick mass we are uh, flat on the ssg so if you remove then it will be slightly positive so trend has improved to that extent no so the way to look at quarter 2 would be that while there is a dick mass in quarter 2 there is part benefit i would not say full month benefit part month part benefit that the navratra got pushed to the october as well so that's how to look at so i will not read too much into plus 1 minus 1 so when when the movements are so small in 100 to 200 basis points i i typically try and avoid reading too much into those indications and for, for us to call us call a green shoot or a or, or a change in direction it has to be a 3% 4% movement for us to call that out to be fair and second question the value layer in the kfc so we introduced on uh, snacking category also we introduced chicken roll and other seven eight innovation of 99 rupees in any color how large it is now for some of the store which is there for 3 to 6 month kind of and so, earlier it was for initially led to cannibalization are we seeing that now revenue per customer or the recruitment of the customer is much higher and impact of the cannibalization started settling down so again uh, uh, typically 3 months period is too small a period for us to give out the category mixes we typically wait for 9 months to 12 months to call that out having said that we are seeing a positive movement also what we the flat ssg in quarter 1 was with a slight higher transaction degrowth what we have seen positively in quarter 2 that flat ssg has come with a marginal or a flat transaction growth so you can already see the positive of this snacker range coming through uh and in the long run uh, that's not how we look at in terms of cannibalization in the long run it helps us to drive transaction uh and that's what we are going for through the snackers range and sure sure thanks a lot and all the best thank you dignesh thank you the next question is from the line of tejas sha from spark capital please go ahead hi uh, good afternoon team uh, and thanks for the opportunity uh so uh, last time when we spoke on the slowdown you you highlighted on personal final con- uh, final consumption slowdown and and there is some correlation with uh, category slowdown and when we entered the quarter we all thought that uh, adik mass will have much more impact on kfc than uh, than than uh, pizza hut but uh, clearly uh, consumers were still eating chicken more than pizza in the cat and in the quarter 
So, so just wanted to understand if we have to go bottom up now on on the reason. Uh, it seems more like uh, like a category issue than the consumer issue, and you highlighted there's a competitive intensity. So you have much more granular data. So just wanted to understand uh, the competitive intensity can't be uniform across the country. So is there any further insight that which area or which region, and and what is the character of this competitive intensity? Is it like uh, established players are going aggressive on pricing, or there are new competition which is coming in, and they are at at mass end and, and taking away the consumer? Yeah, so two parts to this. One is, uh, one is, uh, Pizza Hut has perhaps been impacted a little more because as the second brand in that category, and uh, undoubtedly we are uh, one fourth of the number one player. We've got impacted by consumer headwinds uh, a little more. Uh, so, so first it's a so, at one level, it's the category issue because you've had a number of uh, store openings in the same trade area by another uh, competitor. That in the short term will impact. Over a long term, people, the consumer experience um, that is delivered will, uh, you know, ensure that consumer that they come back to the Pizza Hut brand. So that's at the uh, c- category level, and at the brand level also, we've got work to do um, because uh, in a downturn, smaller brands and Pizza Hut in the category is a smaller brand that has been impacted a little more, and therefore we have called out those four things that we are trying to do, uh, Teja. Got it. Uh, and, and, and you spoke about uh, uh, store uh, shutdown also. So just wanted to know, uh, is this because certain NPS we are not achieving in the stores or it is that they are loss making? Uh, so financial reason or, or consumer reason A. And the, uh, this quarter uh, expansion in Pizza Hut is one of the lowest since, uh, uh, since COVID actually uh, kind of mellowed down. So just wanted to know how we think about uh, the store expansion also going forward. So on store closures, we definitely look at the financial matrices and uh, the loss-making ones. Typically, which are longer uh, period and still loss-making, and where we don't see uh, a possibility of revival after taking all the necessary steps in terms of marketing, in terms of consumer awareness, only post that, once we know that there is no further uh, possibility of revival or further potential, we will take a call. Uh, even previously, we have taken those calls. We have just called out specifically because it would be a query on top of the mind of everyone. Uh, this was the first part of your query. The second part, which was on the expansion, uh, yes, while this quarter has been the lowest, we t- typically, I don't read too much or we should not read too much into quarter on quarter growth numbers. I think one should look at the numbers, which is on annual basis. Sometimes the quarter number is lower, a quarter number is higher. That should not be taken as run rate. We have called out that the Pizza Hut, this financial year, the number will be lower than the previous financial year. I would keep it at that. But uh, suddenly a number of 8 in one quarter and a number of 15 in another quarter uh, should not mean anything because these are store opening, which are also dependent upon the store pipeline and the execution and not necessarily an indication of run rate. Sure. And, And does the guidance, whatever it was earlier, does it stand net of the closure that you spoke about or, or we need to adjust for that? The guidance remains net of closures and the, if I try and give the long term or the medium term guidance of three to four years, uh, I think we are moving towards closer to four marks towards doubling the count rather than closer towards three years. So that's the one year leeway I think we are looking at uh, in terms of doubling the store count for Pizza Hut. And this guidance is uh, net of store closures. Got it. Uh, thanks and uh, happy Diwali to the team in advance. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, Tejas. Happy Diwali to you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurav Kundan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, sorry, all questions answered. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Saurav. Happy Diwali to you. The next question is from the line of Palak Shah from ITI Alternate Funds. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, just a one thing. Uh, earlier, just a couple of years back, we had decided to move from a, a higher focus on uh, dining stores and pizza, to delivery, more delivery focus stores, and that's why we reduced the store size as well. 
So now we are again uh, sort of revisiting our strategy to focus on dining more. Uh, just can you uh, share your thoughts why the churn change? That's one. Secondly, does it entail us to again revisit our store sizes or additional capex to recalibrate this to more dining uh, delivered? Uh, so I guess there was some either misunderstanding or misinterpretation when when this conclusion came out that we actually moved towards delivery led stores. Uh, the reduction in sizes of the Pizza Hut has been gradual, and it has happened uh, much before actually even COVID kicked in. So we were at one point in time 3,000 square feet, moving down to 2,500, 1,800, and then 1,200. The the reduction in that space has happened over a period of time by two parts. First, uh, big work has happened on the back end, uh, and when you reduce the back end, uh, there is absolutely no impact on the on the front of house. And the front of house was uh, re-engineered basis the number of covers required. Our, our restaurants still have 45 to uh, 50 plus covers, uh, which we believe are enough to cater to uh, 14 big meal locations in a week. Uh, yes, there could be a possibility that on a Saturday evening those covers may not be sufficient. Few customers would take away, few customers would turn away. Uh, but we have been able to partner with the aggregators and through our own app uh, get those uh, sales covered up more than enough through an omnichannel strategy. So we never move towards a delivery only strategy, we move towards the omnichannel strategy. Uh, now also when Sanjay has called out those action plans, uh, we have called out both how do you plan to uh, uh, increase revenue in a home service where, uh, where Dragon Tail, the late night deliveries and the improvement in the aggregator rating should help us. Similarly, we have called out the dining also, the kitchen planning production tool should help us improve our service level in store, in restaurant, along with building lunch occasions. So it's a combination of action plans on both the sides. So we continue to operate only channel stores. Uh, there is absolutely no rethink in the strategy in terms of our store format and there is no change in the size of the stores even going forward. Uh, this size is good enough to cater to all the three channels, dining, takeaway and delivery. Got it. So just one more. Uh, so in terms of the margins, uh, uh, despite Pizza Hut seeing a 20% business decline and our gross margin actually improving 20 to 200 bucks on a YOI basis. Uh, are we, uh, have we done some optimization on the cost side to maintain or at least uh, uh, sort of control the cost increases in the last 12 months, which are giving us a benefit in this quarter? So I would have assumed a 20% decline would have been a far lower margins at uh, restaurant debit level. Yes, yeah, so again, uh, Cost uh, control is a continuous process, to be fair. Uh, are we done with it? I will not be able to say that we are done with it. Uh, you would always look for newer and newer opportunities. But yes, it's, it's increasingly uh, difficult if the SSSG is 20% to uh, negative to hold on to the margins level, and that's what you have seen in this quarter results. So yes, any, any drop which goes beyond this, uh, you would see an impact on margin, which is much sharper. And again, if you see an improvement from these levels, you will see an impact on margin, which is positive, which will also be much sharper. So yes, uh, at, at a 20% SSSG, with the kind of deleverage, it leaves a little headroom for cost maneuvering. So if you can just share uh, any material chain savings that we have done, which would be sustainable going forward as well, to so that whenever the margins come about, it will be far... Uh, the margins are far better than what we were reporting on three, okay, four, if, I just, three uh, I, if I can just give out some qualitative indicators, so b across the PNL, for example, a gross margin improvement, while a lot of times it gets attributed only to the cooling of inflation, there is some structural savings which we have been able to build through uh, uh, vendor developments and alternate procurement strategies as well. Uh, there has been a savings across the cost of labor for say. Uh, with the kind of capacity additions in terms of new stores, our labor cost has not gone up by that level in Pizza Hut. So again, how do you optimize, how do you do manpower planning through variable uh, flexi hours uh, planning? So that's on cost of labor, again sustainable. Uh, from again our utility cost, for example, gas and electricity cylinders, uh, electricity uh, units and gas cylinders, we have implemented 
uh, few things, for example, like energy monitoring systems, which is again sustainable. There is a kind, some kind of work which is going on, on even on the gas cylinder consumption, which we believe is sustainable in the long run. So I'm just giving you a few qualitative inputs without without calling and giving you specific details of it. Sure, sir. <laughs> this is helpful. Uh, uh, we should both have a very happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you, Pala. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Nikam from Tunga Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, uh, for taking my question. I have two questions on the KFC. Uh, just wanted to check on the first. Uh, uh, as we have said in KFC, we have optimized the store sizes. And uh, uh, what has been the improvement on revenue per square foot on a pre-COVID to now? Uh, any sense of proportion would be helpful, sir. So, again, revenue per square foot is a metrics which typically is not followed in QSR industry, while it's one of the important metrics in a retail industry per se, because the store sizes are so, so small. So, that's not the way to look at. Having said that, the reduction in the store sizes is without compromising any capacity uh, on the kitchen side. So, the same store size, uh, uh, let's say 1600 square foot store size, is perfectly capable, capable to deliver the same revenue and throughput which earlier at 3,000 square foot stores would deliver. So the size is, uh, uh, the reduction in size is what we have cut down in terms of inefficiencies and the revenue is as good as the previous store size. Depending upon what is the maturity level of a store, uh, they would be at a revenue stage. But does my, are there examples where a 1,600 square foot delivers same or better, better throughput than a 3,000 square foot stores? The answer is yes. Got it, sir. Understood. And sir, one more question on the KFC business. Uh, on the KFC portfolio, if I were to look at, like, let's say, three years down the line, how should we think about the restaurant, the beta margin, and how should we think about the leverage on the corporate overhead? I'm just trying to get to, like, how should we think about the KFC portfolio uh, net EBITDA margin pre in days? Honestly, I'm quite happy that you actually asked this question because it actually allows me to spell out the KFC strategy and we have taken a slightly different path on KFC compared to our competitors in the QSR industry. I don't think they're looking at trying to expand the margin beyond 20%. What we're trying to do is how we can hold the margin at 20% in and around 20% mark and grow faster. And that's what we have done over the last three years. If you see the kind of additions we have done on the brand, uh, we have, over last three years, the brand has doubled its revenue and tripled its restaurant EBITDA. So that's the strategy on KFC, that how we can densify more and more without compromising the restaurant EBITDA. Uh, so if, if our restaurant EBITDA moves beyond 20%, it only gives us a tick mark that we can grow even faster. So that would be the strategy on KFC for the next three years, three to four years, double the restaurant count, uh, grow faster, and if you're able to deliver restaurant EBITDA beyond 20 grow even faster. Got it. And sir, any leverage on the corporate overhead, like which comes after restaurant EBITDA, any leverage that we should expect on that? So, if I, if I look at a three to four year picture, yes, you will definitely look at a leverage. Uh, current year when the overall growth has been a challenge, you may not see so, uh, uh, you may not see such big leverage on the corporate cost side. But typically, what we see overall revenue growth, if it's 20 to 25 percent of a business, Corporate cost would typically grow at 15 to 20%. So that's the general thumb rule, uh, and that gives you leverage on the corporate cost. Very helpful, sir. Uh, sir, if, if you allow this, I have one more question, just all on the concept of the business. Uh, sir, we have, uh, in India, we have these two, two franchises, right, for Yum. So when a consumer places a delivery order, uh, yep. How does, uh, like, it is this, decided that which, actually, which store it will go to? Because sometimes the store of both the franchises are close to each other. So how it is decided that where the order will go? Who will service it? Uh, I'm assuming you are asking in uh, particular for Pizza Hut, because on case of KFC, there is absolutely no overlap. There is a clear territory demarcation. So you are referring to Pizza Hut, right? Yes. Uh, so on Pizza Hut, again, uh, on Olo apps, which is our own apps, there is a clear uh, digital maps uh, which, are, which are in place. So there is no overlap between us and the other franchisee partner. Uh, so this confusion does not exist. In case of uh, aggregators, yes, the consumer may be able to see more than one options available on the app. Uh, 
again i think the consumer would go for the for the restaurant which offers better consumer experience which is reflected in the ratings and secondly in terms of estimated time of delivery which is the eta so a restaurant which is typically nearest uh, and if has a if it has a a good consumer experience uh, that would be in line to receive that particular order but the option is left for the consumer to choose yeah having said that uh, having said that gora when you look at any of the aggregator apps there is typically and if you say choose even kfc uh, the you will get uh, stores that are close to you and stores that are far from you also and typically the consumer chooses a store that is closest yeah. i mean in any brand uh, so they'll if you are in uh, malad as we are in right now they'll even give you perhaps a, a store in bandra and say that it will take um, 90 minutes to deliver having said that this overlap between us uh, uh, is is minimal uh, uh, while there is no overlap at all on the olo the overlap between the two franchise partners will be minimal got it sir thank you okay. thank you sir for answering yeah, i am just conscious of time we have got another uh, yeah yes sir we can take one or two questions more yeah rithik thank you The next question is from the line of Rithik Tulsian from Concept Investment Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hello everyone, and happy Diwali in advance to the team. So uh, I have one question regarding Pizza Hut. So if we look at the leader, the gap between us and them is already huge, right? And now they are going further in the sense like 20 minute delivery, doubling down on technology and etc. So as a company, how do we plan to reduce the gap between? us and them in the long run so i want to know from the perspective of 3 4 years down the line if you can un- uh, elaborate more on the strategy so sir i think it is uh, incorrect to say whether we reduce the gap with them or not what are we doing to strengthen our brand and i talked of the four things um, uh, rithik in the uh, you know in my presentation so whether that closes the gap or not it will certainly have an impact on our performance and uh, it will st- certainly strengthen the brand i think that is how we have to look at it other is to predict what uh, this will result in a market share improvement etc is uh, you know is is a um, is a difficult conversation to really have uh, having said that again uh, with pizza hut's omnichannel strategy i i don't think we have to try and bridge that gap even if we are able to hit our kind of ads and uh, again uh, <coughs> with the omnichannel strategy means the dining sales and the dining profitability is better so this is not how we are trying to track internally because the mix is very different so we don't have to really bridge that gap uh, even if we go somewhere closer uh, we should be able to deliver that kind of profitability but we are far off from that particular situation right now this is this could be probably a very long term ambition but as sanjay said we will focus on our own own things and one thing which i'll call out while you said a 20 minute delivery i think the dragon tail is somewhat to address that i think what customer is looking at today is whether we can deliver a hot and fresh pizza or not as long as they are comfortable with the eta which is the estimated time of arrival or delivery uh, and they get hot and fresh pizza they are less fussy uh, about the Uh, about the whether it takes 25 minutes or it takes 35 minutes, and this is clearly reflected. For example, on our own apps, we are able to deliver a majority of our orders uh, below 30 minutes. Still, the share of our own app is lower. Whereas on on the aggregators, a lot of time the order goes to 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, but customer is happy ordering that. So all they are looking for is the quality, which is hot and fresh, and I think they are less fussy about five minutes here and there. Okay. Thank you so much for your detailed answer. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, uh, all of you for joining. I just want to wish all of you all happy Diwali, uh, wonderful festive season with your family and with friends. This quarter uh, has seen like i said very strong financial performance from uh, kfc 
green shoots of recovery in Sri Lanka. Pizza Hut has had a, a difficult quarter, but we are clear on the steps that we are taking to help the brand recover. Uh, that's all for, from uh, all of us right now. We will see you again in a uh, quarter's time. Again, happy Diwali and God bless.